Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead, where all of you know that we focus on three major things, emergency preparedness, self-reliance, and food security. And today's video goes directly to food security because we're going to talk about botulism, yes, again. And here are the reasons why. Um, Jim and I made a video two and a half years ago, sort of just barely at the time that our uh, channel was starting to take off, a little bit and um, when we were at Thanksgiving my daughter who is a an English teacher at a local high school was talking about how she used one of our videos on that video on probability to show her students as a way to verify sources and um, and so I went back and looked at it because I haven't looked at it for a really long time and oh my goodness it was one of our early videos and um, <laughs> Wow, the lighting was bad, the sound was bad. And so for that reason and one other reason, we're going to redo it, but this time I'm giving more uh, information and in a little bit more detail. The second reason is because I have become concerned once again, based on some of the responses that we are getting in our underneath our videos, and we look at those responses, we had one person say, why does everybody harp, her words and not mine, why does everybody harp, harp, harp so much on uh, botulism spores? Don't they know that botulism spores are harmless? You can ingest them and they won't do a thing to you. Isn't that right? And then she said, and all you need to do is just boil the food for 10 minutes and that gets rid of the toxin that might be in the food. And a lot of the rebel canners are saying that. Well, I nearly flipped my lid. <laughs> in the first place, the first part of her comment about boiling the food for 10 minutes gets rid of the toxin, that is indeed correct. But the other part really troubled me. The part about just opening it up and taking care of it, being cavalier about the way you can, because you don't really need to worry about it. You can just dump it in a pan and heat it for 10 minutes and boom, no toxin whatsoever. All right, so I want to take just a couple of minutes, first of all, and address that toxin. Um, prior to the toxin, we need to understand how that toxin is produced. And this is just a quick review because we have made several videos. In fact, our video on um, annihilating botulism is number two in recent data on our site. And so people are concerned about botulism. And I think it is largely because of the tremendous influence that the rebel or cowboy canners are having on people's thinking. And so this video is an attempt to give you all the facts, the true facts, the valid, scientifically accurate facts so that you can make your own decision. One of the things that we really strive to do on our channel is to help our viewers become totally self-reliant you know, Jim and I aren't going to be around forever. We're pushing our 80s. And so what we want, what we hope our legacy will be is that people who have paid attention and watched our videos will be far more self-reliant than they were before they started. And we want people to be able to think for themselves and evaluate and solve problems based on good scientific sound reasoning. So... The botulism toxin is produced by a bacterium that is called Clostridium botulinum, and there are about seven, six or seven strains of it. And um, it, ha it comes in, in two different life forms. It comes in a spore. Uh, one of its life forms is a spore, and a spore is where it is encapsulated in a very, very tough cuticle. And that tough cuticle, that spore with that tough cuticle is everywhere. It's in the soil, it's in the air, it's in water. We probably have some in our house right now. You do too. We breathe it in, we eat it off of foods. And yes, it can go down into our gut and is totally inactive. It is totally harmless. And that is because our gut is very highly acidic. And it can't withstand, it can't go vegetative and turn into its other life form, which means it breaks out of that capsule and um, then it becomes reproductive. And during that process of eating, growing, reproducing, it produces that toxin, 
Well, what are the environmental conditions that are conducive to changing from the spore to the vegetative state? Here they are. First of all, a low acid environment. Second, little or no oxygen. Third, moisture. And fourth, the temperature that is about what we have in our homes, in our pantries. And so the perfect, perfect place for botulism spores to go vegetative would be inside a jar of home canned low acid food like this jar of mixed vegetables. Inside this jar is the perfect spot for spores if there are any in here to grow and to become vegetative and produce that toxin. Now the sad thing is that toxin, I can't tell by looking if it's in there. It is tasteless, it's odorless, it is colorless. You, you can't even know until you start showing the symptoms. Well, what are the symptoms? Botulism toxin is a neurotoxin. It affects our nervous system, our central nervous system. The first symptom is that the muscles in our face start, um, I mean, it would be like Botox, duh, because Botox is from the botulism toxin. It freezes the muscles in our face moves down and then affects our lungs to where people who are recovering from botulism poisoning need to be put on a ventilator most of all. And um, so that's kind of the backstory of what that how that toxin is produced and some of the symptoms that it causes. But let's talk about that toxin itself. One of the things that bothers me so much is firmly held ignorance in people, firmly held ignorance, where they do what is called confirmatory research. They have an opinion about something, they'll go look up stuff, but they reject anything that doesn't confirm what they already believe. And so they, they say that, see, this article says it, this article says it. They don't read both sides to a story. They discount scientific evidence that is so strong. Well, let's talk about that toxin. Botulism toxin is the most lethal toxin known. The most lethal toxin known. In a laboratory setting, people who work with that, and there are very few of them who will, have to be in tightly controlled lab situations. They have a mask, they have goggles, they have protective hood, they have protective clothing and gloves. Botulism toxin was not allowed in the labs of any of the universities where I worked because it is so lethal. And so you're telling me that if we can just can any old way we want to, and oh yeah, there might be toxin here, so I'm gonna dump it in a pan and boil it for 10 minutes and that's all it takes. Well, let's think about that for just a minute. So we take the lid off, we put it down on the counter. We pour in and maybe we get a spoon and a scraper and we put that scraper off to the side. When we pour it into the pan, maybe it splashes and maybe some gets on us, maybe some gets on our fingers. And the amount of toxin it takes to kill a person is the amount that fits on the head of a pin. That's all, that is all. There are, according to the latest figures by the CDC, 200 cases per year right now in the United States, and it has a 5% to 10% mortality rate which means of those 200 cases, between 10 and 20 of those people never recover, they die. And so what we're talking about is, a, is an extremely dangerous substance. If I suspect, and I don't know how I would suspect because it's colorless, odorless, tasteless, but if I suspect something hasn't, has gone wrong with low acid canning, this is pressure canning, it does not what I'm saying does not affect water bath canning if you follow tested recipes because water bath canning, the foods for water bath canning are all high acid and the um, spore cannot go vegetative in a high acid situation. It's only low acid, vegetables, meats, potatoes, those kinds of things. So if I suspect that there may be botulism inside this jar, do you think I'm gonna open it? Not on your life not on my life. This would go directly into the garbage wrapped in um, a protective plastic bag that wouldn't let anything out, jar and all. I would not even open it. So 
I have said in other videos, just to be sure, boil your vegetables for 10 minutes. I do that. But like I say, if I really suspected botulism was there, I wouldn't even do that. And I just do it as a safety precaution and that's it. I would never mess with that. And so people who are saying, all you have to do is boil it, they have that firmly held ignorance that makes things very dangerous. We have been able to tell from people who are writing in and commenting on our videos that there are just lots and lots of people who um, are just kind of canning by the seat of their pans. They have not consulted tested recipes. They do it the way their mothers and grandmothers have done it for years and years. Um, my recommendation is that in every household that is doing canning, you need to have this book. It is from the USDA Complete Guide to Home Canning. This is in our Amazon store. It's very reasonably priced. I will also put the link below the video where you can just download it and print it off yourself for free. This is the 2015 version. There's a 2020 or 21 version. Uh, the 15 is still plenty good. There were just very few changes made. And this is full of the tested recipes, the processing times, everything else before the USDA got involved and figured out how to deal with botulism spores in home canning. There were hundreds and hundreds of cases of botulism in our country and many deaths. And so now it has been reduced to about 200 uh, cases a year. One of the things that I get concerned about, and a lot of you are the very same way because you have commented as well, is when people will say, I'm just gonna keep canning the way my great aunt Delilah did because nobody in our family has ever died. Well, uh, that argument just simply does not hold water. They are attributing cause and effect inappropriately. That there is, there's maybe a relationship there, but there is not a direct link to causality. And that is what messes with people's thinking, is that because you see one thing and then another thing that they are related by cause, and that is not necessarily the case. So what I tell people is, people who continue to can, ignoring the USDA safety recommendations, do not understand probability. They are playing the probabilities. Well, a lot of people don't really understand what that means. So here's a little lesson on what that actually means. So I have two colors of corn right here. I have this red corn and yellow corn. In this little bowl, I have 99 kernels of corn. And I am going to put it, this bag is empty. I'm going to put it in this bag. And then I'm going to open the red corn and get one kernel. And I'm going to put that in here too. Then I'm going to shake it up and I'm going to reach in and get one. So what are the probabilities that the one that I get is going to be that red one? Oh my gosh. First time ever on camera. Wow. <laughs> so, oh, I had one chance in a hundred and wow, look at what I got. Woohoo! Well, unless this is a bad thing. Okay, so I'm going to put that back in there and do it again. Close your eyes. Close my eyes. Okay, so there's a the yellow one. Now, if I were to do this a hundred times, and then I were to repeat that hundred times, about a thousand times, the result would be the average would be that I would pick that red one out one in 100 times. That's how probabilities are calculated. So I can keep doing this all day long. And every time I reach in, the probability remains the same. It is one out of um, 100. And so there's another yellow one. All right, now let's relate this to canning. So I am going to reach in here. Two, four, six, eight. All right, in this bowl, I'm now going to put 43 kernels of corn. There's 43. 
How many are left in here? 57, including the red kernel. Why did I do that? Because in 2005, the USDA did a quite a um, huge survey of thousands of canners across the country asking a set of questions about how do you can this food, how do you can that food. And uh, by the time that they collected all of the evidence and analyzed the data, what they determined was that 57% of home canners that took the survey, which was representative of all of us, did not can using safe procedures. Did not can using safe procedures. My estimation is that it is even more now because of the advent of the internet and the popularity of all of those cowboy and rebel canner sites where people go for confirmatory evidence and they like what they hear so they just assume that it is true. So now what has happened is that 43 of those 100 or 43% are safe canners. I'm in here. Are you in here? I think most of our viewers are right in this group of those who are safe or who are, are um, working on becoming safe canners. So what's left in here is those who practice canning that is not safe. So if that little red kernel is botulism, what is the probability that someone in this unsafe canning group is going to pull out that botulism and can unsafely to where they kill people or make people sick with botulism? So now the probability is 1 in 57. And so there it is. That time I was safe. So I'm going to put it back in, shake it up. Remember, 1 in 57. And there it is safe again. I, my batch of canning was safe, even though I'm an unsafe canner. Reach in again. I could do this all day long and only pull out a yellow. I could do this for three generations and only pull out a yellow. That does not mean that the way that I'm canning is safe. It means that I just haven't had food that had had botulism spores on it that got in those jars. That's all it means. But the probability is far greater if you are an unsafe canner that you are going to at some point produce botulism. So rather than be on this, in this bunch, don't can your potatoes without putting liquid in. Don't can butter. Don't can milk, no matter what the rebel canners are telling you and assuring you that it is safe. And then many of them will also say, but you have to make your own decision. Well, make your decision and make it a good decision based on probabilities that someday, somehow, these canners are going to have a higher probability of producing botulism than those of us who are here. Now, just because there is not a red kernel in here, it doesn't mean that um, we are 100% totally free of the probability of producing botulism because sometimes things happen. But we are so close to zero, there's hardly any distinction between how we do things and zero probability. While here, the probability is one out of 50. One out of 57. That is how the probabilities work. The numbers are stacked against you if you do things that are not according to a tested recipe. People are asking me all the time to use my gadget, which is my little data logger that goes inside a jar of food while it is in, inside the canner. They want me to prove the USDA wrong, prove them wrong by checking potatoes without any liquid, prove them wrong by, by canning milk. Well, I will never do that, absolutely never. As you look around my kitchen, do you see a proper laboratory setting for testing foods? Of course not. And I'm a PhD in science and I know full well that my kitchen is not a place to do that kind of testing and I won't. The only thing that I used that gadget for was to test those electric canners on a variety of foods and I wasn't testing the foods 
I was testing the canner to see if they were safe. And that's all I will ever do with my little gadget. So that's the story on probability. That is the story of why we use tested recipes. So please do not can by the seat of your pants. Please do not follow family tradition without checking first to see if those family traditions have good science behind them, and many of them do. Many of our mothers and grandmothers knew and learned and practiced safe canning. But double check it with this. If you only have one canning book, this is my recommendation for what it should be. So thank you for being with us and for the redo on this video. And I hope this has helped some of you decide to improve your accuracy. The bottom line is that toxin is very, very deadly. But those of us in here, we don't even need to worry about it because we do things according to scientifically tested recipes, which will eliminate that threat. So let's keep up the good work and we'll see you soon for another video.